over the past couple of years, we've seen this massive rise in immutable distros. Some of them are doing something very different. Things like Vanilla OS and Blend OS. Some of them started as a meme. Immutable Gen 2 Xenia Linux. And sometimes you have things like SteamOS on the Steam Deck. But I think most people first started hearing about immutable distros thanks to a Fedora project. A project from 2018 called Fedora Atomic Workstation. Which you may now know as Fedora Silverblue. As the original name would suggest, this is Fedora Workstation, so the GNOME version of Fedora, but done in an immutable, in an atomic format. Now, this is fine as a name when there's just one of these. Then in 2021, we had another one, Fedora Kinoite. This is Fedora KDE, but immutable. Naming's already a little bit weird, but when you just have two of them, it's not that big of a deal. Well, we didn't have two of them for much longer, because in Fedora 38, we had Fedora Seracia, a mutable sway, and then Fedora 39, Fedora Onyx, a mutable budgie. Now, you might rightfully be asking, what does budgie have to do with Onyx? And that's a fair question. The answer is absolutely nothing. So here is a comment from Joshua Struble, the guy who develops Budgie. Yeah, went with the mineral slash gem naming that Kinoite and Voxite have. That's the reasoning. Also, I'll get into Voxite a bit later, this is another weird name. Whilst it is very clear that all of these projects are related in some way to Fedora, unless you know that weird name that doesn't mean anything means a mutable distro, it's pretty hard to tell that all of these are supposed to be related. But the other problem is knowing what desktop they're actually gonna have. You see Seracia, you see Onyx, and it's like, okay, what does that mean? In the case of Seracia, there is some logic there about the logo, and you can dig into it and kind of find that out, but just seeing the name gives you no indication of what it's actually supposed to be. And the Fedora people agree, and that's why it's being fixed. Finally, a branding change is happening. I've wanted this for a long time, a bunch of the developers wanted this for a long time, and finally, it's happening. Introducing Fedora Atomic Desktops. You may recall me saying that Fedora Silverblue used to be called Fedora Atomic Workstation. So this Atomic branding isn't new in the Fedora project. This is more like a reintroduction. Project Atomic was started 10 years ago with the development of Atomic Host. As the team stated back then, the Atomic Host comprises a set of packages from an operating system, pulled together with the RPM OS tree to create a file system tree that can be deployed and updated as an Atomic unit. In 2018, we saw the start of Fedora Atomic Workstation, a desktop client implementation using GNOME, which became Silverblue a year later. This Atomic Host and Fedora Atomic Workstation is a big part of the reason the name couldn't have been used previously. There is a long debate on the Fedora mailing list about which naming should be used. Should it be all of these weird gemstone names, or should it be using the Atomic branding? The issue is because you have this legal oversight from Red Hat, there was some issues with whether they wanted to use it for this or use it for something else, and it was tied up in Fedora Core OS, and there was just this weird internal trademark issue that took a bit of time to resolve. Now, as with most Fedora changes, there is also a wiki page, Changes slash Atomic Desktops. I'll be jumping back and forth between this and the blog post because there's some details that aren't in the blog post and some details that aren't in the wiki page. We'll just do that. The Fedora website currently uses the term immutable desktops to regroup all desktop RPM OS tree based Fedora variants. The term immutable is confusing to users, has been the source of many confusion, and does not accurately reflect the advantages of those variants. So, we've talked about this many times before, there's a lot of people that just don't know what an immutable distro is. When you say immutable, this means unchanging, which is not at all what this actually is. It's more like an image-based OS, or a OS where updates are done in an atomic manner, where instead of updating each individual package, you update the entire image at once. 
Immutable just leads to confusion. I've seen a lot of forum posts about this. I've seen a lot of debate about which term really makes the most sense. I don't know if anyone has a better term than just atomic or image-based. And image-based doesn't necessarily reflect it correctly either because OS tree isn't technically an image-based system. It's more like a Git-like system. It's Atomic is probably the best we have. And as said here, Fedora Atomic Spins are not actually immutable. There are ways to get around the read-only aspect of the implementation, even though it is much harder. The nature of the OS, where updates are only implemented when they successfully build and you can roll back or release between core host systems, is better described by atomicity than immutability. Atomic is also how many of the contributors who work on RPM OS tree prefer to talk about it. Rebranding provides an opportunity to change the language surrounding this technology. And doing so now is probably for the best. Yes, these immutable atomic systems have been around for a couple of years, but it's not like they've been around for 20 years. And when something's around for that long, changing the way you describe it is, you know, a lot harder. Like take, for example, the rebranding of Wi-Fi. It used to be 80211 and then some letter. Now it's Wi-Fi 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. But there's still so much hardware out there that doesn't refer to it like that and so much documentation that still uses the original branding. Dealing with it now gets the problem out of the way. So hopefully over time, the original, more confusing naming just gets washed into the past. Then there's the problem of adding in new atomic spins in the future. We have four traditional Fedora Linux spins that do not yet have atomic variants. Some of these desktop environments are being experimented with, like Voxite, which is XFCE, from over in the Universal Blue or Ublue project. There are other desktop environments, like Pantheon or the upcoming Cosmic, that we would love to welcome to the community if contributors would like to make that happen. As this group of spins grows, we need to organize them under one umbrella. Let's say they want to do Cosmic, for example. Well, all of a sudden, with the original naming, they need to come up with some, like, gemstone name. If they use the Cosmic name, they could do that, but then it's just out of place. Like, why is there this one that's using its name, whereas all the other ones are not using the name? It's just a giant mess, and it's a lot simpler to just clean up the branding and do something more akin to the traditional Fedora spins or the Ubuntu flavors where there is a consistent naming that all of them use. There is a lot of experimentation happening outside of Fedora Upstream. Ublue was already mentioned, but there's also projects like Sodalite. Pantheon was mentioned as a possibility in the future. Here we have a mutable Pantheon already existing. What does Sodalite have to do with Pantheon? I don't know, it's a name! In regards to that, not having a unified way to talk about our atomic spins makes it harder to talk about them. Have you ever tripped over yourself trying to mention all four atomic spins, or using a shorthand to refer to them, i.e. Silver, Blue, and Friends? Every time I want to talk about these distros, I have to double check, okay, what exactly was Seracia again? Right, right, what about that Onyx thing? Voxite? Yeah, okay, okay, just let's note them all down. That's annoying. And that's someone who's actually doing research on this. If you're just blindly searching through distros, it's very easy to confuse them all. It's a byproduct of how unwieldy it is to have one spin, silver blue, represent three others, while also meaning something specific, an RPM OS tree implementation of Fedora Linux Workstation. There is also confusion about what aspect of these spins are shared. For example, some folks may be looking for documentation on Kina White, not realizing an article about silver blue, also applies to their problem. Using so many keywords when you're looking for information on the one aspect they all share is inefficient. Say you want to know something about installing overlay packages, for example. This is going to be the same across all of them, but if you're looking for Voxite documentation, you might not find it, or you might not find Kinoite documentation, and it's just, it's just a mess. Now, initially, they weren't necessarily going to change the existing variants' names. We will not require existing variants, Silver Blue, Kina White, Seracia, Onyx, to be renamed, as those brands already have some traction and history. It will be up to the decision of the SIGs, 
if they want to rename the existing variants as a result of this change. We will not rename the OS3 refs or do any technical changes related to this change to avoid costly and mostly useless or invisible work. So changing things like the build names, for example, just doesn't make any sense. All that is open for change are the publicly facing branding. However, as for new variants, they will use the Fedora desktop name, Atomic name. For example, in the case of XFCE, this would be Fedora XFCE Atomic. In the case of Hyperland, Fedora Hyperland Atomic. In the case of Cosmic, Fedora Cosmic Atomic, so on and so forth. Now, whilst the existing ones weren't required to change their name, some of them will be doing so. So, Fedora Atomic Desktops is made up of four atomic spins. Fedora Silverblue, Fedora Kino White, Fedora Sway Atomic, and Fedora Budgie Atomic. These were Seracia and Onyx, respectively. This might seem weird and kind of inconsistent, and I would agree, but there is some logic behind not renaming all of them. Silverblue and Kino White retain their names because of brand recognition and being around for much longer. There are many articles and videos made with the Silverblue and Kino White brands, and we don't want to waste those resources by making them harder to find with a rebrand. If you know what you're looking for, you'll still be able to find them. If you know they used to be Silverblue and Kino White, you could still get to them, but, you know, if you're a new user, you don't know the history of the project, yeah, all of those resources, which might still be perfectly valid resources, are much harder to find if the website doesn't have good SEO that they're actually updating to keep in line with the changes being made. Seracia and Onyx are much newer. These started in 38 and 39 respectively, and both SIGs wanted to switch the new naming convention. If you notice in that post from Joshua Strobel here, he kind of was a fan of Fedora Atomic anyway. Yes, there are going to be some blog posts and documentation and articles about Onyx and Seracia, but considering at the longest they've been around for a year now, you know, that's a lot less damage that is being done by a rebrand. Also, they're not exactly the, you know, flagships of this project. Silverblue is what you think of when you think of Fedora Immutable or Fedora Atomic. If you like the KDE side, you'll instead think of Kino White. Budgie and Sway are both great desktops as well, but they are tiny in comparison. Due to all the trademark issues regarding the Atomic branding, it wasn't the only suggestion. We also had Package Mode, which I think is terrible. Image Mode, also not great. Image-based might work, but then the name starts getting really long. Maybe Fedora Image Gnome. I, I don't really like the ring of that. Reprovisionable. No. <laughs> Anti-hysteresis. I guarantee most of you don't even know what anti-hysteresis means. This way of describing immutable or atomic systems comes from a blog post by Colin Walters. These are fully managed systems. The system does not have unmanaged state e.g. an admin interactively doing SSH and making changes not recorded declaratively somewhere else. It is image-based. Traditional package managers end up with a lot of hidden state. Related to the above, image-based updates avoid that. It is reprovisionable and not a pet. I don't like the industry pets versus cattle term. I think reprovisionable is both nicer and more descriptive, which you didn't describe here. Has anti-hysteresis properties. Yes, I know this is an awkward term. See the hysteresis Wikipedia page. So, hysteresis is the dependence of the state of a system on its history. For example, a magnet may have more than one possible magnetic moment in a magnetic field, depending on how the field changed in the past. If you need a full Wikipedia page to understand why a term is being used, I think that might not be the best term. Another suggested option was to rename all variants under the Silverblue name. Silverblue Gnome, Keenan White becoming Silverblue KDE, then Silverblue Sway, Silverblue Budgie, so on and so forth. This, however, creates two long names and would likely create confusion as users would expect all system to share a Silverblue base, which is not the case. The new Umbrella brand also gives us a name to put alongside their RPM OS3 cousins. Fedora Atomic Desktops live alongside Fedora OS3 and Fedora IoT, as they all use RPM OS3 in serving different needs. 
Along with this, there's also a Fedora Atomic Desktop SIG. How this SIG didn't already exist to coordinate things in a sensible way, I don't know. But maybe that's how we ended up with the weird branding that kind of just naturally formed. One of the long-term goals of the SIG is to work on making those variants the default option in Fedora, thus removing the need for a distinct name. So making it so the atomic desktops are just Fedora Workstation. I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. Honestly, I don't really ever expect it to happen. There are so many users out there who want to have all of this access to their system and just don't like the way that image-based systems or atomic systems are being done. But I would like to see them get a lot more use. On the other hand though, if they do aim to make it the default, that means a lot of the surrounding tooling is going to get a lot better. And even outside of an immutable system, that is a good thing. So, let me know what you think of the rebranding down below. Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's just stuck with the original naming? Did you even know that immutable desktops existed? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become a one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Change bad, no change.